Hey guys, welcome back for another Courageous Conversation. Happy Sunday. I hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, we are going to talk about how to make a setback a comeback. I am so excited about this segment just because I know it's going to be a part two and maybe even a part three because I want to break down some key points as well as some different categories in our lives that we have like common setbacks in. For instance, finances. We have setbacks in our emotional life. We have setbacks in our when it comes to dealing with loss. And these are personal experiences that I've had and ones that I've shared with my friends and family. So I hope you guys enjoy these type of videos. Definitely give a attention to the i card over here which i will definitely leave next week's segments some choices some options definitely vote and also check me out on my community tab here on youtube it will give you throughout the week when i am posting those questions don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell because it's going to let you know when the video drops okay and i know i've been a bit late I have like let you guys know that there are a couple of things going on in my family's lives. It's coming up to the holidays and some of them won't be as scheduled or as timed as I would like it. I do post my videos here on Sundays at 2 p.m. But in the case it's late or even I drop it early, you will know. And I thank you so much for for the feedback, for the love that you guys are giving, for the wisdom that you are dropping in the comments, and it's helping other people. Don't think that when you comment, it, you're just replying to me. Other people see it, and even if they don't comment to you, it is fulfilling their spirit. Thanks so much for coming back over and over again. Courageous Conversations is thriving. You guys are commenting and I'm not looking at the numbers. I'm not looking at how many views. I think that that's important. But if one person is affected, if one person is set free in their mind, in their spirit, if one person has a solution for the week, I have met my goal. So I hope you guys are enjoying the video. In the beginning of this video, I will let you know this is an intro. So you are going to see my bare face in the duration of this video. I am going to break it up again. And I hope you guys enjoy the segment. I'll see you soon. Bye, guys. It's another Courageous Conversation. I'm your girl, Melissa Q. Welcome back. If you're OG, thanks so much for hitting me up on Sunday. It's a chill day. It's 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yes. In today's video, we are talking about how to make a setback a comeback. And I definitely can talk about this because I've had some setbacks, but it was a setup for a comeback. And let's just get right into it. As you can tell, this is a get ready with me. You guys either love my get ready with me's. In today's video, we talk and we chat. Of course, you can't talk to me right now, but in the comments down below, definitely leave what you think about this. What have you had that was a setback that you turned into a comeback? If you're in a setback right now, it's all good. You are going to make it through. Okay, we're going to get through this. And I did say we because I'm going to be in prayer with you. Yes. And it is going to get us through. Yes, because we're going to pray about it. We're going to put it on our pre PR list. PR list means prayer request. We're going to put it on the prayer, uh, the PR list. So if you have something that you would love for us to go into prayer about, definitely let us know down in the comments. I am so excited about this on my channel, y'all. I'm glad that you guys know this. I feel more open about um, sharing my faith and my love for Jesus Christ on this platform. And I love, you know, I like hair, y'all, but I love God. You don't love God? What's wrong with you? Y'all know I had to say it. Let's jump right in. I have some new makeup right in here. I got my brows already done. We use the Senna Brow Bar this right here this former brow this is genius this is so good and um senna is senna cosmetics is more of one of those makeup artistry like put it in your kit type of brands and this one doesn't make you look so angry i talked about this in a favorites video let's jump right in 
to some makeup, okay? Okay, how to set, how to make your setback a comeback. I was just meditating, praying, as always, y'all. I pray before I get on camera and I talk to you guys. Um, and I'm like, Lord, what should I share with, um, you know, the supporters, the people of God, those that don't know where to go, give me some direction. And so, of course, I'm going to put some scriptures down below. And I'm also going to um, talk about some scriptures in this. And I will do my best to note those or annotate those on the screen. So, one of the first things that I think about whenever I have a setback or I feel like I'm stuck in a certain area. One of the things that above all you have to do we can talk about a lot of things you know I always I have difficulty and I know that this is an issue that I have is sometimes I talk um, where I talk and I feel like I'm going to will that to happen now it's great to, to have talk behind it but you have to believe what you're talking about and in a setback a lot of times what happens is that we lose faith we lose we have that setback and we lose hope. So I would say the first thing in a setback, I've had financial setbacks. I've had setbacks with having children, which is one of the main ones that I really experienced. And God just, he brought me through that. And that's the one I'm going to talk about that in finances today. The loss, a setback of loss and your finances and loss of people. Two big things, two large areas that I feel like almost everybody faces. At some point, you lose people in your life and finances can affect a lot of things. Finances is the number one reason why people get divorced statistically. It, can, it causes a lot of problems, but the Bible says that Money answereth all things, but the love of money is the root of all evil. So we definitely need money to sustain life and to be able to help others. Uh, you know, the biggest quote that's, I think one of the most heard of quotes is, it takes money to make money. So setback, let's talk about finances. Setback and finances. If you've ever you know, been to this place where you're poor, you've been poor before, or you're there right now. How can I make this setback a comeback? And one of the first things I would say is to, you got to get your hair straight. And getting that hair straight, getting your mind focused, focused. Um, the Bible says that we have to speak those things that are not as though they are. Okay. And so, we have to get in a mind space where we can start believing again that we have hope and i heard this from td jakes and it's so true he said it is so hard the hardest thing to do is to try to encourage someone that is comfortable in their dysfunction and i was like wow that was a wow moment because you know if you're not willing if you're comfortable at the setback, you can't ever make it a comeback because you're comfortable. You're like, I'm always going to be set back. You, can, you have to stop the negative talk. Okay. So when I say get the mind straight, you have to stop the negative talk in your head and those that are around you. You might even have to change your atmosphere. And that is associated with toxic friends, okay? Or those that we call toxic friends, or those that we even claim to be our friends, which are really not. If they're talking toxic to you, there's they have something, I don't even wanna say they're not a friend, but they have something going on in their own life and they do not have the ability to help you. They don't have the ability to help me, okay? They can't help us. And so positive talk will help you out so much. So one of the things that you may, I, I think that we definitely have to do is if you have the inability to speak it and believe it yet, write it down, write it down. There's a statistic that says 
88% of what you write down will come to pass. Okay, so you have to write the goal down. Write it down. Even God's word says, write the vision. Make it plain. Put it down. It says write it on the wall, but put it down on paper. That's basically what their form of scrolling was. You write it down. Okay, and you create that goal in your head. You're seeing it every day. You're seeing it and you have to say things. You have to say it before you see it. You know what? I don't know how I'm going to get that there, but I am a businesswoman. I am an entrepreneur. I am. And I keep saying that and I'll start believing it because what will happen is I will say, Lord, I'm speaking these things that are not as though they are. I need to get myself in a headspace. One of the ways I know sometimes it's hard to pick yourself up, but God's word is so essential in uh, making a setback, a comeback. Because the God's word not only has promises in it, it has people who have dealt with the same things that we're dealing with now that have overcome. And there are also people in God's word that have made bad decisions and mistakes. And we can learn from those as well. There are people that even have done wrong in our own lives. We should learn from them. Learn those mistakes. We don't have to bump our head in order to make those mistakes. So in order to make a setback, a comeback, I have to learn and read God's word. And guess what? I don't have to know every scripture in the Bible. I was listening to a... Um, Instagram live that my sister was doing. She does one on marriage. Highly re recommend you guys that are married or considering marriage or even dating. She has a, like a marriage ministry because that's something that has been, you know, that she feels passionate about. He supports her in it. And hey, Lisa, hey, Jay. I am so extremely proud of them. And um, if you want to, you know, see anything about that, it's 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 gonna bless you as well i was on there and i was like man this girl is i mean she's not a girl but she's a woman she's just my baby sister she's my young uh my younger sister not the youngest but um it has a lot of wisdom um you can tell when people have been with god and have like really communed with him and are gaining wisdom and don't mind sharing it with other people that's one of the things that I definitely love about Lisa is that she is willing to share what she's learned. And I feel like, you know, that's our whole purpose. Any situation that you have gone through is not just for you. It is to minister to somebody else. And I'm going to tell you, in order to make a setback, a comeback, you have to serve. I know it sounds crazy. I know you want to get in your feelings. You want to be depressed. You want to pull the covers over your head. But the number one place where you are going to make that a comeback is that you have to serve. You have to serve. And I remember wanting to lay down, literally, and like I was like oh, I had I was I felt so defeated after losing our daughter so defeated but y'all there was a time that <laughs> this is why prayer and just really communing to God and, and with him is so important is that uh, God even let me know in my prayer time serve serve me serve me how do you serve god you serve other people you give god's word and you say still blessed be the name of the lord even when i'm going through something because you know david said i will bless the lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth it's in my mouth it says that the word is nigh thee even in your mouth okay that you have those blessings. You can bless yourself by blessing someone else. Okay. God is a spirit of give, giving. Selfishness comes from the enemy. If depression is one where you are with, you know, you're, you're thinking about the situation. You're about yourself. If you want to get out of the self selfishness, it's time to do the opposite, which is selflessness. Selflessness. 
go and encourage somebody else. And what I mean by that is even in your turmoil. Okay, so I'm going to give you something that God <laughs> shared with me. Um, this, this was maybe a month after we had lost our daughter. One of my friends, um, still a friend today, was having a baby. And she was at the hospital. Um, she had had some complications. And I was like, I was trying to contemplate if I was going to go. You know, some people say, oh, I'm good. You know, you ought to be there. That is such a hard thing to do to after losing a child to go and be with your friend. But this is the choice that God gave me. OK. You can stay home. And if you need to cry it out, cry it out. You know, cry it out. Wasn't a bad choice. I knew what the right choice was, though. The second choice he gave me was that if you go to the hospital, you are there to celebrate with your sister. It is not to bring your sad story with you. And not to say that I, I did literally have a sad story. Okay, right? But my job is to rejoice with those that rejoice and weep with those that weep. Now, that was not my turn to go and rain on her parade. It is not our job to talk about woe is me when someone else is celebrating something. You know what? One day it's going to be my turn. It's going to be my turn. But today is not my day. Today is her day. And so I decided, I said, Lord, he was like, you know what? And that was like some tough love. That was a tough prayer, you guys, when I was in prayer. And I didn't want to hear that, but it was the truth anyway. It was time for me to rejoice with my sister. Y'all, you know what I did? I bought a teddy bear and a balloon. I took it to the hospital. Never spoke. And when I said celebrate, I'm not saying just like, here's a bear. She needed to see my true, genuine joy. That she had brought a life into this world. And I did it. And it felt. I'm trying to hold back tears right now. It felt so liberating you guys. In the sense that I could overcome my own feelings. To share in the joy of somebody else. And I knew that that was a milestone in my spiritual maturity. Because it was beyond me. That moment was beyond me. I'm so grateful to God. <laughs> it's hard to even talk about how it was such an awkward moment, but it was a joyous moment. And um, what I thought about was if the tables were turned, what would I have wanted my friend to do? Would I have wanted her to come with her sad story? Because that definitely would have made me feel bad. I'm here with my holding my baby. And she's not holding hers. And she cry about her losing her child at the hospital when I just had mine. Do you know how dev how bad that would make somebody feel? Like, I'm, so, I'm like, I'm supposed to be happy right now. You know? So, it is... In our calamity, it is our job to still serve. If we want to get out of it quicker, and I'm not saying that, uh, you know, what we thought would take two years could take two months. What we thought could take forever, God can make it happen in a moment. So, you know what? It's, it's a test, y'all. The setback is a test. It is a test of, and a trial of your faith. And the Bible says without faith, we cannot please God. So if you have lost faith, the job is and the comeback is to get it back first. That is the first comeback. And let me just say, don't think about what's going to happen five years from now, a year from now, five months from now. In making a setback, a comeback, take one day at a time and make a victory for that day. There is victories, small victories that you have to overcome before you get to the big ones. And I remember, mm, my God, okay, thought about this.
See, when you talk about the goodness of God, he will bring you back to those steps that actually helped you get that victory. You know what happened is that in order to get the victory, um, I was getting small victories. And I remember I was thinking in my mind, I lost my baby. I lost my baby. But you know what the Lord said to me? And when I say the Lord said to me, y'all, this is all through per prayer. I'm going to tell you, a lot of my hope, a lot of my, my, my comeback came from prayer, reading God's word, and the people around me. I'm telling you guys. And I don't care what anybody says. If you need more church, you get there to the church. If you need to get to the altar, get to the altar. Y'all know what I'm saying. Okay. Get to the altar and commune with God. Okay. Um, the altar is a sacred place. Okay. In his sanctuary. A sanctuary was built um, in, uh, you know, in ordinance of God's, you know, work. So all in all, what I'm saying is where God is, is where I want to be. Okay. So the set, I mean, the comeback, the first victory that I got, you know what the Lord like really let me see is that Melissa before you was losing children, you lost, you lost one before this, you couldn't even get pregnant. You were pregnant for what is it? Five months, almost six months in your pregnancy. I had gone that far and I had to believe God take took me more than half of the way and I had to believe that he would take me the you know further into a pregnancy that's what gave me hope at least wow wow for six years I wasn't pregnant well I was pregnant no for the last four because I had a child um, that was the first one was a miscarriage and that happened Two years after we were married and then for four entire years nothing nothing okay then I get pregnant and then give birth to a child she dies in our arms and I'm like God you gonna have to give me you gonna have to show me something positive in this Look for the positive, you guys. You have to look. There is a lesson. I don't care how small it is. It is a lesson. And, y'all, if it wasn't for that loss, I wouldn't have gained the other two children that I have right now. So, how can I say that what happened was a bad thing? I would have never known the condition that I had. And as a matter of fact, I needed special help in that. And I would have... I could have died actually almost did with my daughter okay and almost did with the last one but if it wasn't for the that special care and need that I that I needed at the time whenever I have children if it wasn't for Brooklyn I would have never known that with Elijah and Joseph okay so can I can I really say that that was the the experience was not a fun one at all, but it was a beneficial one. Did, do you understand what I'm saying? It was one that still brought me victory in the end. So, y'all, all I'm saying is that um, get the little victories on a daily basis. Take it one day at a time. You know what? Think about today. That's how you're going to get. You have to get through today. OK, and when God gives you that expectancy of hope and you have to expect you got to expect God to bless in that on that day. OK, I don't know how God is going to do it, but I'm going to do his word. He has promises in there. I'm going to have to keep God to his word. You're going to have to trust somebody. So it says trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he'll direct direct thy paths okay and that's uh psalms I believe that's is that psalms psalms 34 it's in there y'all i want to say proverbs but i believe it's psalms but you guys just get the little victories don't worry about the big ones don't you know Oh, God, but, you know, I know that I'm a businesswoman. 
but what steps am I taking in the small victories? Okay, you know what? How about a, a, a business learn from another business that is doing well? Get some hands-on training. Find a, a business person, a, a mentor, and say, you know what? I just want, just can you give me some tips? Go online. There's YouTube is such a, a, a huge platform of information, okay? Use what you have until God gives you the next step. And then the next step, because it's always going to be a learning thing. Let me just say this. Anything God sends your way is not going to be easy to get. Okay. Anything worth keeping is not going to come easy. If it comes easy, because I would say be concerned. But if it comes easy, not to say that that's not a blessing, but. If it's from the Lord, you're going you're gonna to earn it. You're going to have to earn it. And you're going to appreciate it. Not to say that it's not worth it if it doesn't. But it's, it, it's, you're going to have to earn it. Okay. It's going to, that's, that's just, I've just found that out. Tell me it, it, if y'all have found, I do believe that there are some things that come with blessings. But y'all, those blessings come from hard work and labor and toiling and test and trials not saying that you can't have nice things not saying that at all but i'm just saying that the things that we receive from the lord have to be earned it's like a good father a good father is not just going to give their their son or daughter anything you're gonna have to work for it okay anything worth getting in this life and in the life to come because like i said i was telling somebody that life it's not this shell right here that we're living in. This body is a, this is life that we know it. And this flesh and blood that we are in is a comma, not a period. Okay. And so we just have to be ready when, you know, we ask something from the Lord. We have to expect that there will be some attest attached to it. Because we have to prove ourselves. We have to, we're going to have to say that, you know what, we've been through this. And it even says that, you know, there's some certain things that's going to happen if we're followers of Christ. That, you know, we're, we are going to suffer persecution. There's going to be some things that have to be earned. Okay. But in the earning, the victory is far more greater than what you had to earn. The glory of what happens after. Okay. So in our finances, we have to come with a level of expectancy. We have to give. The word of God says, Give and it shall be given. Good measure. Press down, shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosoms. Okay. So that means that I have to give. I have to relinquish some things. I can't have a tight hand and expect the Lord to bless. Okay. I can't hold back with people. And by the way, money is not the only way that you can give. Okay. If you have, if you have funds, if you have food, if you have those type of things, give it. But I'm just saying we can't. We can't come to God asking for our things with our hand out. Lift them up and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for what I have right now. I'm going to use the resources that I have right now. And I'm going to I'm gonna give. And I'm going to bless somebody. I'm going to give my time. I'm going to give my effort. I'm going to give a good word. I'm going to give a positive word to somebody. I'm going to... I'm going to give some love and some nurture to my children. I'm going to give some love and nurture to some people that don't have parents. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. And I'm saying, I'm going to tell you, it says that he'll pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. When you give to your ministry, when you give, and yes, I'm saying give into ministry because I feel like just like we invest in schools and teaching and stuff like that, God has ordained for ministry to be funded and it has to come from somewhere. The lights don't leave on themselves. And I'm saying that from, 
you know, a perspective of being a PK. All right. I, I, I understand. And um, I have been um, in a capacity of leadership pretty much. I don't want to say I've, I've, I've known the ropes of like cleaning the toilets, y'all. Okay, sweeping the kitchen, washing dishes. Okay, I had to do it the same thing. It, it wasn't something that's glorious and glorified, but I really appreciate the training because I learned some things. I learned people interacting with people, how they act, how you know how I should treat them. Learned so much in that. And um, I'm just excited about what God is doing, what he's going to do for you. I know this is going to be a long video. It's going to be a, probably a two part. So um, I am going to kind of finish up my makeup and we can talk a little bit more. Let's talk a, a little bit about what I have put on my face already. So far, um, I can tell you that I do love the foundation that I have used that serum I've used it a couple of times and I really do like it it's hydrating it's not cakey at all it has a natural finish I found out that I really like a natural finish I like to see that I show I have coverage but I like a natural finish I am uh, I do like this shade of Ofra this actually came from an Ipsy Glam bag. This is from the Madison Miller and Ofra collaboration. This is in Sweet Stuff. I love this Farrah brush. Um, is this a, let's see what, this is a three, a 30F brush. Um, Andrea Renee recommended this. This is the Sephora Micro Smooth and this is in tan. And it, um, it reminds me a lot of my MAC foundation and let's see I just love this blush reminds me a lot of my shirt y'all I have to do my hair so this is why it's, it's wrapped up at least it's in something that matches but this is the perfect this is perfect for my cheek color okay I also like it for bronzing. Um, I use the Laguna bronzer. I kind of have it on a chopping block. I don't know about it, y'all. I think I need something a little bit more warm still. So that might go away. Um, let's use something a little bit more. Let's see. Do I have a bronzer in here? I do. Okay. Let's use the Micro Smooth. Not the Micro Smooth. We're going to use for a highlighter NARS Abiza, Abiza, and False Fallacies by what is who is this by? This is by NARS. I'm sorry. Okay, I need a brush. Okay, we're gonna use this brush, and let me pull the film off. I hope you guys have enjoyed this segment. I did have to cut it short, but I just want to let you guys know that I love you so much. I hope you have an amazing week. Don't forget to take it one day at a time and we will see you back here. And as always, as I would say it is, if you're going through anything, definitely drop it in the comments. I definitely will pray with you about it um, and we're going to get through it. And as always, if you don't have anybody else to talk to, you can always come back because I'm going to be here for you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.